Colonel, if you send out the regiment, Cochise will think I've tricked him. Exactly. We have tricked him. Tricked him into returning to American soil, and I intend to see that he stays here. Colonel Thursday, I gave my word to Cochise. No man is going to make a liar out of me, sir. Your word to a breech-clouded savage, an illiterate, uncivilized murderer and treaty breaker? There's no question of honor, sir, between an American officer and Cochise. There is to me, sir. People say the Western is dead, and that in any case it was just all about nostalgia for something that never really existed. But at its best, the genre distills something crucial about American history and American mythology and the relationship between those two things. And so it's never irrelevant. It's never not topical. For example, look at Fort Apache, John Ford's 1948 cavalry picture, which has a lot to say about our current adventures in counterinsurgency around the world. We here have little chance for glory or advancement. While well, some of our brother officers are leading their well-publicized campaigns against the great Indian nations, the Sioux and the Cheyenne, we are asked to ward off the gnat stings and flea bites of a few cowardly digger Indians. Fort Apache takes place shortly after the end of the Civil War. It concerns a garrison of American soldiers, some of them from the Confederacy, some from the Union, who are trying to defend this lonely outpost against hostile Indians. Now there's more than just gunplay and horseplay in this movie. There's a wonderful fancy dress ball set piece. There's a charming performance by, of all people, Shirley Temple. And there's the usual John Ford collection of colorful and comical supporting players. Who will be the first volunteer? I am. The movie begins with the arrival at Fort Apache of Owen Thursday, the new commander, played by Henry Fonda. He's an intellectually impressive figure with an encyclopedic knowledge of military history and a brilliant command of strategy and tactics. His fatal flaw, though, is his rigidity, his inflexible adherence to his way of doing things. The uniform, gentlemen, is not a subject for individual, whimsical expression. Thursday's foil is Captain Kirby York, played in a marvelous performance by John Wayne whose long experience at the fort and in the Indian country surrounding it gives him an incisive understanding of the situation as it really is. Your pardon, Colonel. You'd hardly call Apaches digger Indians, sir. Here we have the two contrasting faces of American military power. York understands that the only way to avoid catastrophe is to be flexible, patient, and sensitive to the needs of all parties. Gentlemen. I have the honor to present the great hereditary war chief of the Apache Nation. Thursday has a fixed set of principles, ideas, and theories that lead him to respond exactly the same way in every situation, regardless of the circumstances and sometimes with disastrous results. Tell them I find them without honor. El coronel lo encuentra sin honor. Tell them they're not talking to me, but to the United States government. No está hablando él, sino al gobierno americano. Tell them that government orders them to return to their reservation. El gobierno lo ordena que regrese a su reservación. And tell them if they have not started by dawn, we will attack. Y le da de tell them that. Alba, si no atacará. The tension between these two approaches really resonates with what's happened in Iraq and Afghanistan. At the beginning of the Iraq war, we saw the dominance of what you might think of as the Thursday, one-size-fits-all approach to the situation. Whereas more recently, both in Iraq and especially Afghanistan, we've seen the emergence of, say, the York approach, which values more local knowledge and cross-cultural communication. And that dust cloud beyond? It's an Apache trick. Probably squaws and children dragging mesquite. But of course, a lot of questions remain. Can we control the outcome? Have we already gone too far? And how well do we know this territory? 